oral squamous cell carcinoma or what's called oral SCC there are yearly 400,000 new cases worldwide the predisposing factor predisposing factors to oral SCC are first of all is tobacco tobacco use and second one is alcohol and both of them when used together they have synergistic effect which means that the effect of both together are more than just a summation of the both factors other factors is sunlight and we have the fair complexion the people with uh, light skin or white skin and both of them are risk factors in lip other risk factors is immunosuppression and HIV or whatever organ transplant whatever is immunosuppression and HPV of course the high risk type there are special kinds of foods that's risk factors we have betel quit betel quit special kind of foods which is used in the South Asian countries and we have the qat or khat which is used in Yemen special kind of uh, plant for eating locations of uh, oral squamous carcinoma locations uh, in lower lips there is 45 percent in tongue there are 16 percent floor of the mouth have 12 percent in buccal mucosa there are 10 percent and in upper gingiva and heart palate there will be about five percent multiplicity is common in uh, oral in uh, oral uh, squamous cell carcinoma if the patients have uh, oral squamous cell carcinoma the risk of, of uh, to get another oral cancer is about 100 volts this is because of a biological phenomena known as uh, field cancerization or field defect what we mean by that uh, if the organ or a tissue have many cells that all cells are exposed to carcinogens so let's get another color so there will be some of the cells will have uh, mutations whether in genetics or epigenetics uh, levels then one of the cells will go and grow into a cancer so if in the removal of that cancer there will be some another cells that will predispose to a CA because the carcinogens will affect a field what we mean by field is it's multifocal and the most common site for the now to be affected by field cancerizations is the colon cancer and because of the cancer and by adjusting uh, or nearby polyp also we have the lung cancer 
and head and neck tumors neck tumors and of course oral cavity is one of them Uh, microscopically, the cancer would uh, will either have exophytic or endophytic growth. Uh, the exophytic growth may have uh, fungating or papillary. or or virusiform growth and this kind of one is usually it is ulcerated while the endophytic one uh, may be depressed lesions or endurated and the age of the ulcer the age of the CA will be rolled out, uh, rolled border. Microscopically, microscopically, uh, most of them are. Keratinizing squamous cell car uh, keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, uh, of course, will be either well or moderate or poorly differentiated. Or poorly differentiated, and uh, the squamous cell carcinoma, of course, uh, the most common is uh, features are will be the formation of intercellular dysmosomes and the formation of keratin pills. Uh, usually there is uh, nearby uh, in, in situ carcinoma can be identified and there may be an invasion without surface atypia. Surface atypia. This is an example of uh, squamous cell carcinoma. There will be a uh, nestus of well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma invading the uh, lamina propria and then have uh, formations of keratin uh, pills. Uh, Immunostochemistry uh, will be positive for cytokeratins. Uh, spe uh, especially the high molecular weight and uh, P40 and P63. Well, this will be positive. Well, CK7 and CK20 will be negative. Uh, if the cancer associated with the P53 or TP53 mutations, this will indicate a bad prognosis. Uh, variants of uh, oral squamous cell carcinoma the most important one and the most common one uh, is uh, Virroca's squamous cell carcinoma. Virroca's squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, we have to know that 
more than 75% of all verrucous carcinoma of the body, all the body is present in the oral cavity. Uh, this is, there will be, of course, there will be market, there is uh, epithelial hyperplasia, uh, hyperplasia, with, uh, of course, elongation of the ridges or uh, elongated, ready, and there will be a pushing margins, and we pushing borders. Uh, we have to know that all the Viroca cell carcinoma are well differentiated. Squema cell carcinoma are well differentiated. Uh, if you find a poorly differentiated or modulated differentiated in a Viroca uh, squema cell carcinoma, so it means it's not a Viroca variance, it will be more with the uh, squema cell carcinoma. Mitosis is rare. Uh, there may be papillary surface, and if, if good uh, sectioning of the verrucous carcinoma, about 20% will change the diagnosis into a conventional squamous cell carcinoma. Example of uh, verrucous squamous cell carcinoma, there will be. Uh, elongation of the red ridges and uh, it's a well differentiated there will be no pleomorphism or mitosis and there are pushing margins and there is, there is a reactive lymphocytes in the lamina proper other variant is less important include uh, what we name it carcinoma caniculatum carcinoma caniculatum is a well deficient squamous cell carcinoma that is uh, uh, endophytic growth patterns deeply penetrated crypts and slowly growing so there will be endophytic endophytic uh, growth and also like verrucous carcinoma there will be little or no cytological atypia it's well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma this is an example of uh, carcinoma caniculatum so there will be endophytic endophytic growth of the squamous nestus, which you will differentiate it as squamous cell carcinoma. We have other types, other variants, uh, spindle cell, or what's called sarcomatoid. We have basiloid. Muscle carcinoma, we have papillary muscle carcinoma, and uh, of course, acantholytic. Muscle carcinoma or uh, pseudoglandular. And thank you.